Welcome to St. Helena Ministries Daily Prayer with the Divine Office. Today is Tuesday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. I'm Patrick. This is my beautiful wife, Charlotte. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Let's get started. Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. Come then, let us bow down and worship bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Meribah and Massah they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, They shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship our mighty King and Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, let let us us worship worship our our mighty King King and and Lord. Lord. Lord, your word abiding, and our footsteps guiding, gives us joy forever, shall desert us never. Who can tell the pleasure? Who recount the treasure? By your word imparted to the simple-hearted. Word of mercy giving succor to the living. Word of life supplying comfort to the dying. Oh, that we discerning, it's most holy learning. Lord, may love and fear you evermore be near you. Let God arise. Let his enemies flee before him. Let God arise. Let his enemies flee before him. Let God arise. Let his foes be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is blown away, so will they be blown away. Like wax that melts before the fire, so the wicked shall perish at the presence of God. But the just shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult and dance for joy. O sing to the Lord, make music to his name. Make a highway for him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice in the Lord, exult at his presence. Father of the orphan, defender of the widow, such is God in his holy place. God gives the lonely a home to live in. He leads the prisoners forth into freedom, but rebels must dwell in a parched land. When you went forth, O God, at the head of your people, When you marched across the desert, the earth trembled. The heavens melted at the presence of God, at the presence of God, Israel's God. You poured down, O God, a generous rain. When your people were starved, you gave them new life. It was there that your people found a home, prepared in your goodness, O God, for the poor. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Let Let God arise. Let his enemies flee before him. Our God is a saving God. He, the Lord, holds the keys of death. Our God is a saving God. He, the Lord, holds the keys of death. The Lord gives the word to the bearers of good tidings. The Almighty has defeated a numberless army, and kings and armies are in flight, in flight, while you were at rest among the sheepfolds. At home, the women already share the spoil. They are covered with silver as the wings of a dove, its feathers brilliant with shining gold, and jewels flashing like snow on Mount Zalman. The mountains of Bashan are mighty mountains. High Ridge Mountains are the mountains of Bashan. Why look with envy, you high ridge mountains, at the mountains where God has chosen to dwell? It is there that the Lord shall dwell forever. 
The chariots of God are thousands upon thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai to the holy place. You have gone up on high. You have taken captives, receiving men in tribute, O God, even those who rebel into your dwelling, O Lord. May the Lord be blessed day after day. He bears our burdens, God our Savior. This God of ours is a God who saves. The Lord our God holds the keys of death, and God will smite the head of his foes, the crown of those who persist in their sins. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depth of the sea. Then your feet will tread in their blood, and the tongues of your dogs take their share of the foe. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as as it was was in the the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will will be forever. forever. Amen. Our Our God God is is a saving saving God. God. He, He, the Lord, holds the keys of death. Kingdoms of earth, sing praise to God. Make music in honor of the Lord. Kingdoms of earth, sing praise to the sing praise to God. Make music in honor of the Lord. They see your solemn procession, O God, the procession of my God, my of my King, to the sanctuary. The singers in the forefront, the musicians coming at last. Between them, maidens sounding their timbrels. In festive gatherings, bless the Lord. Bless God, O you who are Israel's sons. There is Benjamin, least of the tribes, at the head. Judah's princes, a mighty throng. Zebulun's princes, Naphtali's princes. Show forth, O God, show forth your might. Your might, O God, which you have shown for us. For the sake of your temple, high in Jerusalem, may kings come to you, bringing their tribute. Threaten the wild beast that dwells in the reeds, the bands of the mighty and the lords of the peoples. Let them bow down, offering silver. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Princes will make their way from Egypt. Ethiopia will stretch out her hands to God. Kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Praise the Lord who rides on the heavens, the ancient heavens. He thunders his voice, his mighty voice. Come, acknowledge the power of God. His glory is on Israel. His might is in the skies. God is to be feared in his holy place. He is the Lord, Israel's God. He gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, you have given us joy in your holy meal. Help us to understand the significance of your death and to acknowledge you as the conqueror of death, seated at the right hand of the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Kingdoms Kingdoms of of earth, sing sing praise praise to to God. God. Make Make music in in honor of of the the Lord. Lord. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. He tells of peace for his people. A reading from the first letter of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. You can depend on this. Whoever wants to be a bishop aspires to a noble task. A bishop must be irreproachable, married only once, of even-tempered, self-controlled, modest, and hospitable. He should be a good teacher. He must not be addicted to drink. He ought not to be contentious, but rather gentle man of peace. Nor can he be someone who loves money. He must be a good manager of his own household, keeping his children under control without sacrificing his dignity. For if a man does not know how to manage his own house, how can he take care of the church of God? He should not be a new convert, lest he become conceited and thus incur the punishment once meted out to the devil. He must also be well thought of by those outside the church to ensure that he does not fall into disgrace and the devil's trap. In the same way, deacons must be serious, straightforward, and truthful. They may not overindulge in drink or give in to greed. They must hold fast to the divinely revealed faith with a clear conscience. They should be put on probation first. Then, if there is nothing against them, they may serve as deacons. The women, similarly, should be serious, not slanderous gossips. They should be temperate and entirely trustworthy. 
Deacons may be married but once, and must be good managers of their children and their households. Those who serve well as deacons gain a worthy place for themselves and much assurance in their faith in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Although I hope to visit you soon, I am writing you about these matters so that if, if I should be delayed, you will know what kind of conduct befits a member of God's household, the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of truth. Wonderful indeed is the mystery of our faith, as we say in professing it. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by the angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, taken up into glory. You must have at heart every member of the flock, for the Holy Spirit has made you their shepherds. You must rule over the church of God, which he made his own, through the blood of his Son. The great quality of a steward is to be faithful to his duty. You must rule over the church of God, which he made his own, through the blood of his Son. A reading from the beginning of a letter to the Trallians by St. Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop and Martyr. Ignatius, also called Theophorus, to the Holy Church at Tralles, in the province of Asia, dear to God the Father of Jesus Christ, elect and worthy of God, enjoying peace in body and in the spirit through the passion of Jesus Christ, who is our hope through our resurrection when we rise to him. In the manner of the apostles, I too send greetings to you with the fullness of grace, and extend my every best wish. Reports of your splendid character have reached me, how you are beyond reproach and ever unshaken in your patient endurance, qualities that you have not acquired but are yours by nature. My informant was your own bishop, Polybius, who by the will of God and Jesus Christ visited me here in Smyrna. He so fully entered into my joy at being in chains for Christ that I came to see your whole community embodied in him. Moreover, when I learned from him of your God-given kind, kindliness toward me, I broke out in words of praise for God. It is on him, I discovered, that you pattern your lives. Your submission to your bishop, who is in the place of Jesus Christ, shows me that you are not living as men usually do, but in the manner of Jesus himself, who died for us, that you might escape death by belief in his death. This one thing is necessary, and you already observe it, that you do nothing without your bishop, indeed be subject to the clergy as well, seeing in them the apostles of Jesus Christ our hope, for if we live in him, we shall be found in him. Deacons too who are ministers of the mysteries of Jesus, should in all things be pleasing to all men. For they are not mere servants with food and drink, but emissaries of God's church. Hence they should guard themselves against anything deserving reproach, as they would against fire. Similarly, all should respect the deacons as Jesus Christ, just as all should regard the bishop as the image of the Father, and the clergy as God's senate, and the College of the Apostles. Without these three orders, you cannot begin to speak of a church. I am confident that you share my feelings in this matter, for I have had an example of your love in the person of your bishop, who is with me now. His whole bearing is a great lesson, and his very gentleness wields a mighty influence. By God's grace, there are many things I understand, but I keep well within my limitations for fear that boasting should be my undoing. At the moment, then, I must be more apprehensive than ever and pay no attention at all to those who flatter me. Their praise is as a scourge. For though I have a fierce desire to suffer martyrdom, I know not whether I am worthy of it. Most people are unaware of my passionate longing, but it assails me with an, incre an increasing intensity. My present need, then, is for the humility by which the prince of this world is overthrown. And so I strongly urge you 
not I so much as the love of Jesus Christ, to be nourished exclusively on Christian fare, abstaining from the alien food that is heresy. And this you will do if you are neither arrogant nor cut off from God, from Jesus Christ, and from the bishop and the teachings of the apostles. Whoever is within the sanctuary is pure, but whoever is not is unclean. That is to say, whoever acts apart from the bishop and the clergy and the deacons is not pure in his conscience. In writing this, it is not that I am aware of anything of the sort among you. I only wish to forewarn you, for you are my dearest children. Make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit through a peace that binds you together. There is but one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope when you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. No one can lay a foundation other than the one who has been laid, that is, Christ Jesus. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Let us pray. Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. Thank you for praying with us today. Don't forget to join us for our Sunday Rosary live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern every Sunday on our YouTube channel. That link is in the episode description. For somewhere over 550 subscribers or followers across the multiple platforms, we'd like to get to 750 by the end of the year. If you would, please like, share, follow, and subscribe on whichever platform you use. Pray for us. Know of our continued prayers for you. Have, Have a blessed, blessed day. day.